In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that at the name of your Son, Jesus, our knees do bow and our hearts do soar with joy. In your mercy, hear our prayers and grant us your peace all the days of our life. Through, you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation will may be seated as the choir sings an anthem. Kindergarten through second grade of our grade school will sing. If you want to follow along with the song, it's 442 in your hymnal.
On this 19th Sunday after Pentecost, we see that God does not divide us where Christ has called us. Here in our first lesson, Numbers chapter 11, verses six, verse 16 and then verses 24 through 29, Moses doesn't, doesn't stop men from prophesying to whom God had given that gift of prophecy. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me seventy of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. And verse 24, So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together seventy of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with them, and he took of the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the seventy elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldad and Medad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all of the, the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. This is the word of the Lord. In our second lesson, Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 18, Paul rejoices because Christ is preached. The name of Christ, Christ is preached. Regardless of motive, that fact brought Paul joy. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 9, beginning with verse 38. Glory be to you, O Lord. This will also serve as our sermon text this morning. Here Jesus encourages us to be at peace with each other as we work in his name. Teacher, said John, we saw a man driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me, for whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you the truth. Anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. 
Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace and peace to you from the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. We'll look at the name of Jesus, the first part of the gospel lesson, 38 to 41. Teacher, John said, we saw a man driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. 
Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you the truth, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. This is the word of our God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, one in salvation and purpose because of the saving name of Jesus Christ. If you could in your mind make three columns, good name, a bad name, and then a saving name. So you're going to put these names under any of those columns. A good, good name you just said, or that's a bad name you just said, or that's a saving name. These are the names. Adolf Hitler, Mom, Green Bay Packers, Detroit Lions, IRS agent, friend. Our good names and bad names list would all be different. Some of us would have the Green Bay Packers in the bad name because we're not a fan. Others would have the Detroit Lions in the bad name because of their 0-3 start. I called an IRS agent. Probably many would have it in the bad column. That lady was very nice and very helpful. Mom, of course. Adolf Hitler, of course. But the saving name category, that would all be the same for all of us because we didn't hear the name. We're going to hear it today. The name of Jesus. Jesus teaches. Heaven's teacher teaches us about his saving name and we'll watch why the name of Jesus does miraculous things. And that's exactly what was going on here in our text, wasn't it? An unknown man here was doing miraculous things in the name of Jesus, sending demons flying. But the disciples stepped in because he was not one of us. Stop it! Think about that. They, they stopped him because he was not one of them. They were having a tough time with what he was doing. And you read earlier on, they tried to cast out demons, the disciples, and, and it didn't work. And we heard last Sunday, they were arguing about who of them was the greatest. So that's strangers, not one of us. So stop using the name Jesus. When it's about us, then we'll come lost in destruction. You're not one of us. Adam and Eve, they wanted their names injected into the conversation. And we know what happened when they tried to be like God. The name of Jesus stands alone. Stop using it because it's, you're not one of us. It's not about our name. It's not about somebody being one of us. It's not about me. A famous preacher, I remember this in Texas, when he, he fell, as he preached famously, he fell famously. And somebody who, a reporter who studied his life, looked back on his ministry, made this comment. He, he seemed to start out a humble man, but then God's ministry became his ministry. If it's about us, he's not one of us. The name of Jesus. Stop it. We all take that warning. The Tower of Babel, they wanted to make a name for themselves. And you know what happened. Teenagers, I want the name independent. And so family joy and unity gets destroyed. And and Satan waits in the bushes right outside the front door. Married people, I want the name free. And so heaven bless marriages become hell-cursed divorces. We know. We watch it. 
Anytime it's about me, my name. We, we, we want the names, don't we, that the world admires the greatest, the prettiest, the richest, the funniest. Work hard to claim names for ourselves, but we can't shake heaven's declaration. The greatest? Sinner. The prettiest? Sinner. The richest? Sinner. The funniest? Sinner. Stop preaching about Jesus Christ. Stop using his name to cast out demons because you're not one of us. John, the Apostle John, at least this was a good thing, wasn't it, in our text? He addressed Jesus as teacher. Could you teach us, Jesus, about this? And Jesus started with a rebuke. Do not stop him. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. This man was acting in the name of Jesus. With faith in Jesus, the Savior said. That's for a sinner. He was casting out demons in the name of Jesus. That's for Jesus, for the glory of his name using it properly. Never our names. Always the name of Jesus. Children, your parents understand that. Life, your life has to be about the name of Jesus. And so when you were born, they gave you a name, didn't they? Timmy or Tommy or Abby, Sarah. But then they took you to be baptized for God to give you a name. His child, heir of eternal life. Teach us, Jesus, about your name. And he has. Baptize. And then we teach and we worship. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We confessed all about our names and what we are when we confessed our sins. But by the authority of Christ, Pastor Nauman declared that your sins were forgiven. The word of God fixes our eyes on Jesus so that we never lose heart. Our prayers through Jesus we ask this. You know the conclusion. We ask this in the name of your Son, for he lives and rules with you in the Holy Spirit. And we leave under the blessing of our triune God, the name of our God who sent his Son. And all is well. All is well. And all is well as you preach it to. We never need to grab a name. Who was that stranger? We don't know. That's fine, we don't know. He had a name. You have a name. For your salvation and to preach, to proclaim. Jesus. So as we go out with that name, the Lord promises rewards. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me, for whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you the truth, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name, because you belong to Christ, will certainly not lose his reward. Jesus gives you rewards. Do you ever really even think about that or look for that? I bet they don't hear when this happened. Those guilty disciples, you know, just think of what they did when the Lord rebuked them. Oh, because he was not one of us, we stopped, tried to stop him preaching casting out demons, doing all that the name of Jesus does. They stood on the side of the demons. And what reward did they get from Jesus? Did you catch it? He said, disciples, 
Don't stop him. Anyone who is not against us, Jesus said, is for us. They stopped the name of Jesus, but Jesus didn't stop using his name with them. You're part of, you're part of us. You're part of me. It's about us. What reward do I need as a Christian? I have Jesus, my reward. Us. Confessed our sins this morning? Jesus says us. You belong to me. He lived without sin, our Savior, all by himself. Nobody else did it. He lived without sin. Us. Jesus says. His name will be the Lord, the righteous one. Yeah. But the Bible promises more. His name will be the Lord, our righteousness, for us. He died alone for the sins of the world. He died alone. No, he didn't, the Bible says. When you're baptized, Romans 6, we were buried with Christ through baptism into death. That death, us, He rose from the dead victorious. The victory to him alone. No, Jesus says, us. Romans 8, you you don't have to ever be a slave to fear. You're children of God. You're heirs of eternal life. You're co-heirs with Christ. All that Jesus won. The victory of his resurrection. Us. What's our reward? Jesus is our reward. And yet, he promises that reward. A cup of water in my name, because you belong to Christ, will certainly not lose his reward. Children, if lunch today is just a cup of water. You go, and what's for dinner? And you go in there, just just a cup of water. It's all you have in your house. Your parents are going to say, fold your hands. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. And let this cup of water to us be blessed. And it will be. Because they set it before you in love for Jesus. But it won't be all you have, will it? Because as we go to Holy Communion, your parents, they hear Jesus again say, for us. This is about us. My body and my blood, for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. They have their reward. And whatever they set before you, they're going to work hard to give you the best. And and the school that we support here so that they can hear you sing about Jesus like you have. And the prayers we offer and the mission work as a synod. And we go because we have everything. It's not about me. And when I make it about me, Jesus forgives me. And his gospel, us, draws me back to his name. And so we are saved. And so we go. And then Jesus will come. Just maybe read Matthew 25 again. When he looks at you on that final day. What's your reward the Bible has a lot of them that they talk, you know, the, the peace we have now. Have no fear, little flock. The, the riches, God's riches, the inheritance of his saints, it talks about all that great joy that will be there. You shine like the stars, those who lead many to righteousness. You shine like the stars in heaven. When Jesus comes on Judgment Day and he looks at you, whatever you did, you did for me. And then 
for us. Come, come enjoy your father's happiness. God grant that we catch ourselves. It happens a lot. You're not one of us, so stop. And so the gospel would. And so the gospel would. Except for Jesus. The name of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. That's the name we go out with. The name of Jesus, here and always, for all eternity, does miraculous things. Amen. The rewards the Savior promises, um, no, we leave that up to him, but, but our lives are filled with them. And, and one of them is the promise of Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the name of Jesus always does miraculous things. And just think about it. We get to pray, Our Father in heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sins forgiven, peace with God. Holy communion for us. What, my sin? No, his forgiveness for us. And so with that joy, we pray in the name of Jesus. Grant us always, Holy Spirit, humble and confident hearts to hear the name of Jesus proclaimed. Grant us also boldness to proclaim the name of Jesus to a dying world, for it is the only name given by which we may be saved. Fill us with peace and joy, O Savior, as we hear you again declare for us at Holy Communion, your true body and blood for us, your full and saving forgiveness for us. You are, O Jesus, our shield and our very great reward. With glad hearts, Heavenly Father, we pray as our now living and ruling Savior enabled us and taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always
will give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Teacher, the Apostle John said in the Gospel lesson, and so they were taught by the Savior. Please remain standing as we have that as our prayer for our last hymn verse, hymn 510, the one verse. Good morning. Welcome to you all, especially those who are visiting uh, with, our, with our children's choir today. Thank you this morning for beautifying our service grades K to, K to 2, reminding us of uh, the fact that we are a little flock and, and our Heavenly Father is watching over us and will guide us. Just a few announcements in the, in the bulletin. Uh, it's, it's on the calendar, the Sewing Circle meeting this week, Thursday at 9 a.m., but that will not take place uh, as the bulletin states, the Sewing Circle. If you have questions about that, call Mara, Mara Frederick. Uh, if you're interested in, in uh, if you haven't been involved in that in the past and are interested, call her as well, and there's information for it. Uh, Pastors Conference taking place at Williamston, Michigan, uh, tomorrow and Tuesday, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll be down there for that. Uh, a voters meeting will be next Sunday at 2 o'clock. A couple of items that are, that are uh, significant on that uh, discussion are elections and the budget. Uh, so uh, certainly a great privilege and responsibility that God gives us uh, as leaders, as men in the congregation to carry out these responsibilities. So uh, take that uh, opportunity to serve your Lord in that way. Uh, put that on your calendar October 11th, next Sunday. And may God richly bless your week. <laughs>